Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 12, 9, and 7. In today's video, I'll be showing you a quick initial flip through of uh, the new 2022 Singapore Mathematics program for grade four. Now, I actually think I haven't bought something. In spite of the fact that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books here, I think I forgot to buy the teacher assessment guides, which include the tests. So I'm undecided on whether I'll actually buy those or not. But if you've been following along on my channel for a while, you know that we initially started out our homeschooling career for my eldest with um, Singapore math in first and second grade. And we just used the US editions of those. It was really great. And then he really wanted a change in third grade. Like he asked if we could use a different math program. I think just, just for variety's sake. And I happened to buy grades one through seven of Math Mammoth because they were on sale and I got them all for like $110 or something. So we switched to that. It's been working out excellently for him and all the children have used Math Mammoth for the past few years. So my eldest has used Math Mammoth for grades three, four, five, and now six. My middle for grades uh, one, two, and three, and my youngest for grades one and now two. Uh, she's a little bit ahead in math. And it works out perfectly fine. However, my middle daughter, who is a hybrid uh, third, fourth grader, she would be a third grader if she was in school, but she's a fourth grader for some things, like now math, uh, wanted a switch from Math Mammoth. And I noticed that in spite of the fact that Math Mammoth teaches with a very similar style to Singapore in the sense that it really does teach mental math and a way of thinking about numbers on the base 10 scale, um, in a very logical fashion, not so much like just an arithmetic fashion, but for a view to how numbers interact with each other um, in a base 10 system. She was still having a little bit of difficulty just progressing through the curriculum. Like she would do certain chapters and not do well on that chapter's material at the end of the year test. So she had expressed some frustration with Math Mammoth. It really wasn't her favorite thing. So I thought for her, let's see if this brand new version of Singapore works because I really do like the mental math approach of both of these curricula. One thing I was not expecting, however, was how many books there would be. Now, I have no affiliation with Singapore Math. They don't know I exist. Um, this was not inexpensive. Certainly having that PDF of like seven levels of Math Mammoth for $114 was much more cost effective. But I do think that this is much more colorful and much more engaging for a student who doesn't like to see a lot of problems on one page. So really fast, I'm just going to do like a quick flip through just to show you like kind of like the volume of material per page in a Singapore workbook versus something like Saxon or Math Mammoth. So you can see immediately it's very colorful. There's not that much on one page in terms of like work to do. So in, in those ways, I think it's a lot less overwhelming. However, if I'm talking about doing all of these pages of work for my student, which would be these six books, because these are teacher guides, that's a lot of work too. So we'll see how it goes for her. I am going to start off with just the teacher guide. Now, as I said, this is my initial impressions. So I am not well versed in this curricula. I think that there's a great video out there by Homespun Education. Uh, Sarah did a really nice video walking you through the differences between the Home Instructor's Guide, for example, and the Teacher's Guide for this level of math. So I will try to link her video down below. This is um, a very hefty curriculum. I especially do not like how they made the Teacher's Guide an entirely different size than the Student Guide. I find that to be incredibly irritating, but that's just me. I, I also appreciate that they hole punched all the student books, but they did not hole punch the teacher's guide. Another irritating thing. It's also just an awkward size. Like I, I don't like it. It would be difficult to, to bind at home because you have this strange length of book um, if you wanted to make it spiral bound. Now, I'm not going to go through in detail for every single page of this guide. I'm just going to flip through to give you an idea of what it looks like. It does a good job of talking about um, how the book is laid out, like what you have in the student book, the recall sections, the practice on your own, the performance task, which is a formative assessment at the end of each chapter in a real world context, and then you have chapter practice. 
If you wanted to get the assessment guide teacher edition, then you have tests um, for each chapter in there, as well as a cumulative assessment, mid-year and end of the year assessments. You have a, a chapter pathway in each chapter. And it talks about like what kinds of things you would technically do in class, because again, this is designed for classroom and you know implementation, not home implementation. And then you have the additional support. So you have here, you know, the chapter opener recall, the student book sections here, and then additional support is suggested. So like the additional practice student book or um, on level extensions. And then you have, it goes on and you have performance task, a STEAM project, you have chapter practice, and then the assessment again, that's a separate book, the chapter test. So again, after the compact way of using Math Mammoth, you know, it's like two books all in one, like the textbook and the workbooks all together. This is, you know, it makes me sigh. But I mean, you know, I think it's just me having to get used to having a whole pile of books just for math for one grade. So here you have the Singapore math approach, which again, I think is fabulous. Like it goes through metacognition, your processes, the concepts, the conceptual idea, the properties and relationships between numbers, the operations, the algorithms, you have skills, and then you have attitudes. And it really does approach math in a multifaceted, comprehensive way that I don't think can be matched by another curriculum. So you have concrete, pictorial, abstract, visual models, problem solving, uh, mathematical and perceptual variations, learning progression, and differentiation and assessment as you go throughout. Then the teacher's guide goes into more detail about the different types of pages, like what the recall pages versus um, the activity pages or the learn together pages. You have digital manipulatives when you see this little icon that you can, you get a code when you purchase the curriculum and you can download those. It goes through and says, you know, the practice on your own, which is designed to be homework for a student. You have performance tasks and project work and then chapter practice. And then you have mastery and beyond, which is another book that we have, which consolidates the concepts and skills at a section level of a chapter to deepen the student's understanding. So it reteaches some stuff and it gives you some additional practice. It goes through what the instructor's guide is structured like. So you have a chapter overview, you have chapter at a glance that includes a lot of your standards if your district requires that. A chapter opener, teaching tips, uh, the recall section, suggestions for games, uh, additional support and digging deeper to challenge your students that might be finding this easy. When it goes through every single lesson page, you have a lesson opener. So those are teaching ideas, lesson development, uh, focus questions, how you learn together, and an activity, and a lesson debrief at the end, which wraps it up and gives you like focused questions to ask the kids so that they can articulate their understanding back to you, which I think is really nice. It walks you through these steps for a home educator. There's chapter wrap-ups at the end of the chapters and a performance task. There's also a rubric for uh, grading each question in, in the uh, sections if you needed to grade your assignments. There is STEAM project work and chapter practice, chapter tests, again, like I said, would be found in the um, teacher book of assessment. There's a clear table of contents. There is about six chapters in this book, and they go through multi-digit whole numbers, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. And that goes up to dividing three-digit and four-digit numbers by one-digit numbers. The four operations, um, and then fractions. And the fraction chapters are split into chapters five and six. When you get into the chapter, like I said, it has an overview, key ideas, a list of the materials you will need, chapter at a glance with all your standards, chapter opener, recall. It really does go through and tell you exactly what to do. Um, it tells you what every single question in the student's work is designed to address or remind the student of, and it gives you an answer key right here. So all of it is together in one section. It lays out how much you're doing that day, and then you have day two of 12. So it takes 12 days to get through this topic, and it goes through in the same fashion. So as you get to the end, you have a lesson debrief, 
practicing on your own. It tells you exactly what pages those are on in the student book and the answers are right here. So I actually kind of like the formatting of this. It seems very easy to use. It gives you more resources, meaning like other things that you could work on beyond the student book. So here it says additional practice for A, exercise 1D, extension 4, mastery and beyond uh, 4A, chapter 1, practice 4. So it's, it's very keyed in to what you would want to be doing. At the end of chapter two, you do have the chapter one uh, practice answers here. And then if you wanted to get the assessment guide, it does tell you to do the chapter test as well. There's a chapter self-reflection, like what can the student do and they can mark it themselves. And I think that's actually a really nice activity for math. I think we miss out on that step in math a lot, like that self-assessment, that self-reflection of what you've been learning and how strong you feel in it. And all the chapters are organized in that fashion. You'll notice that the days are labeled out for the chapter. So when we got to chapter two, it started out uh, with a new list. So day one of 16, I believe. So that's how the Home Instructor's Guide 4A is laid out. In 4B, I'm just gonna show you the table of contents. You have chapter decimals, area and perimeter, uh, geometry and angles, measurement and time, metric units of measure, etc. And then you have word problems as well. So that gives you a good idea of the Home Instructor's Guide. Okay, so I don't like the size of those guides, but I am impressed with how they were laid out. They seem very user-friendly on first glance. Now, these are the two student books. Again, this is the core book. So if you wanted to just buy the teacher guide and the student books, you totally could do that. So again, you have a really nice table of contents. You'll notice this is much more colorful than the teacher guide. Really, you know, user friendly. It talks about all the same areas of this book that I talked about in the teacher guide, like the recall, the chapter practice, the performance task, etc. The chapters are laid out with their little sections. It starts out with these very broad comprehension questions like how large is one million? Why is knowing the size of it useful? It goes through the recall sections. If you do have your student label their name and date, that area is provided for you. And then it has a little self-assessment at the end of that lesson. Like, can you do those things? When it moves into the numbers, they do suggest in their list of suggested manipulatives, these little like coins, you know, place value coins. You can actually buy these. I bought a magnetic set on Amazon for not too much. I will try to remember to link that in the description box down below because it was very useful. And I had a lot of the other manipulatives that they include in their set, so I didn't buy those. Um, there's these cute little graphics asking you questions for comprehension. There is an activity here to take turns to pick six number cards to make a six digit number. The classmate with the greatest number wins. So you could do that amongst yourselves. You can do it as a game where each of you randomly picks six cards, for example, from a deck of cards and sees who can make the biggest number. There's a project work assignment here where you learn about the Golden Great Bridge and you answer questions like what's the estimated length of the bridge in feet, the estimated distance between the two towers, the total weight of the bridge. You can design a bridge to support the weight of 10 toy cars. So it really brings it out into the real world for the student. And then you have a chapter practice section. I think if I purposefully did not buy the textbook, it was because I felt that I could use the chapter practice sections um, as the chapter test uh, to assess their understanding. I like so. the practice on your own sections because they definitely bring it into real world programs or real world problems rather. So here you have a swimming pool contains this many gallons of water, another this many gallons of water are added to the swimming pool, and then you think about how much is there now, what the if the capacity of it is, you know, and a different number, how much more water is needed to fill the swimming pool completely. The student workbooks are basically organized like that, and you have a 4A and a 4B uh, student workbook. Now I'm going to show you the stuff that you may not want to get, and those include the Mastery and Beyond books as well as the additional practice books. Again, those are separated into 4A and 4B. I'm going to show you the um, additional practice book first because it was on top, and it just talks about how this gives you extra practice. So you have it split up into your chapters again, and like I said, in the teacher guide, they do recommend when these pages may be used. So you can do it that way, or you could save this book as a review book and use it over the summer just to refresh these skills, you know? Like a lot of the problems will mimic problems that you have in your student um, workbook, except they are less colorful, they're more just straightforward work problems. So I really like this. 
And then you get your Mastery and Beyond, which bring out a little bit more complexity and problem solving into these chapters. So here you have um, Counting by Thousands. You have a lot of uh, color in this book. It's much more like your student book in that it is colorful. It uh, is pretty low density in terms of problems. It's a fun way of thinking about these things. So you have number patterns, you have rounding, you start to have more um, word problems and just a different way of thinking about the fun foundational skills you've learned in your student book. So these two things are not the same. This is not like an extra practice book. This is sort of a deepening your knowledge book, you know, deepening how you can apply these concepts that you've learned. So again, this was um, the new 2022 version of Singapore math for fourth grade. I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions about this curricula or would like to see more in detail about how we're using it throughout the year, I generally put more day-to-day -day life stuff on my Instagram account at Project Happy Home. So feel free to follow me there. I post way more in my stories as a, like a day in the life than I do in uh, my, you know, feed on Instagram. But like I said, I'll be periodically posting how this is going throughout the year and I'll probably do an end of the year review of it as well. I have high hopes though. Looking through it, I think my um, daughter will really, really like how it's laid out. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And as always, you guys, I appreciate your time. I know it's valuable and we all have too little of it as it is. So I wish you the very best day. Thanks so much for watching.